Don't be alarmed. I promise this is gonna be a friendly video even if you don't like the looks of my hat. Also, I'm absolutely a human and therefore incapable of skipping on Westworld, HBO's great new sci-fi series that's based on an equally great but kind of overlooked sci-fi film. Even though the show is set in the future, the writer staff did not go all willy-nilly with its technology. In fact, their depiction of this futuristic theme park is based on real tech that exists in the world today. One piece of tech you'll instantly notice throughout Westworld is the foldable screen. And in our semi-near future theme park, these work flawlessly. Bernard or Dr. Ford flash these devices as if they had three different screens, but we see it open, and it's a totally smooth, creaseless, and basilless single display. No warping, no distortion. In the real world, foldable screens have been talked about and promised for years now, especially by companies like Samsung. Check out their flexible AMOLED commercial from way back in 2011. Tech companies have been dreaming up even more malleable, bendy tech concepts since, but Samsung demoed a training wheels version of their concept at the 2012 CES. While still years away from that fully transparent and bendable device, the rumor mill points towards 2018 as a target date for the Galaxy X. Have you read the Westworld part terms and conditions? Uh, of course not. What kind of subreddit obsessed fan might you be? But the writer staff did leak it online for those of us who are interested to find, and if you read it, it confirms our suspicions about how guns and ammo work on the show. To quote the official part paperwork, gun ammunition contains proprietary safeguards related to bullet velocity. And if you read further in this magical document, it defines what this special ammo is called, simunitions. Essentially, these bullets are made of so-and-so material and fired at such a rate that they will not pierce human skin. Instead, as we observe through characters like the Man in Black, they function more like a pellet gun or a paintball gun. You might bruise a little and it'll definitely be hurt, but the person is ultimately fine. If we can make reference to pellet guns or paintballs, obviously there's some real-world analog here. But what makes the ammunition on Westworld different is, well, like any TV tech, its ultimate purpose is to serve the narrative. When the Men in Black fires a 20 gauge one shot Lamont, it's able to blow through a wall, even though that simunition isn't able to pierce a human skin. So the firearms here may have a real world analog, but they function less factually than the other tech within the park. Now, guns and computers are so 2017. We all know the real star of Westworld is just how far the tech has come in terms of artificial intelligence and 3D printing. Not only can the park team create human models that look, sound, taste, and smell human, but these hosts can passively interact with humans without coming off as obvious contraptions. This is all stuff that we, mankind, are genuinely working towards. Now, aesthetically, we may not have surpassed the uncanny valley in real life, but computer graphics have come far enough that Paul Walker can appear in the Fast and Furious franchise post-mortem without a hitch. On screen, we can also create entirely new human-like individuals based on the mannerisms of others, if Snoke, played by Andy Serkis, is any indication in clips of The Last Jedi. And a recent episode of Radiolab showed that with mere clips of an individual combined with some voice recording, research can manipulate those elements into a final product where it appears anyone has said anything. George Clooney can wish you a happy birthday even if he's never been recorded saying your first name. And when we're talking about intelligence, ours readers are probably very familiar with the Turing test. Essentially, this competition strives to see if an AI chatbot can fool a human without notice, and it's got roots in the 1950s, even though obviously today, the competition has been much fiercer. Likewise, today's military is developing AI and robotic weaponry that can learn from its surroundings. TRACE, which stands for Target Recognition and Adaption in Contested Environments, is a DARPA initiative to develop drone tech that adapts to its environment and therefore can circumvent opponent misdirections and decoys. The only problem? How can you test something like this? As combat tech expert Peter Singer told us on the Decrypted podcast, these tests happen in controlled environments, meaning that whatever results Trace has won't necessarily translate to the chaotic real-world nature of war. Today, we've also 3D printed parts of anatomy effectively. Last year, a team from Wake Forest Medicine created bone, cartilage, and muscle through 3D printing, and it all functioned when placed into an animal. So maybe we haven't quite gotten there with human anatomy, but the host tech on Westworld does have a basis in today's technology. 
But just this fall, engineers at Columbia University unveiled what many dubbed a breakthrough in our pursuit of lifelike robotics. They were able to create a 3D printed, one of a kind artificial tissue that not only mimics human muscle, it may be stronger. In tests, the material allowed bots to lift 1,000 times their own weight. Those are capabilities that are three times as strong as a human. But what's gonna keep us coming back for season two is the show's not so distant future glimpses of where our present day tech may be headed. After all, thus far the show has definitely based its tech in reality. And we're not just talking about all those cool Stetsons. <laughs>